Hello, Cliff here. <laughs> Welcome back. Brand new project. Um, this is going to be great fun. It's a rubber powered model which I'm converting to radio control. The model was bought for me by Ian and Cheryl of Ian's RC Exploits fame back in the spring when they paid a visit. Uh, very kind of them to buy me a little aeroplane and I'm going to build it and this is what it is. The Keelcraft Ajax, it's 30 inch rubber powered model. I'm going to do it RC because this is such a high performance aeroplane that if I flew it where I fly my, say, my little chipmunk, um, I'd lose it. Oh, I don't want to lose it, so I'm going to make it RC. And But it's going to be made very much in the style of a rubber powered model. It's going to be tissue covered and very, very lightweight RC equipment. So really looking forward to it. So let's, um, let's have a look inside the box, shall we? As I say, I think it's 30 inch. That was a bit of a guess actually, but I think it is. This is a classic design. Oh yeah, 30 inch. So classic design, hugely under cambered wing. Uh, the wings banded on and so is the tailplane actually i'm not sure if i've banned the tailplane on or not and would you believe i've got an original keelcraft ajax plan in my plan box because i found it and then compared it it's virtually identical this has been um, been redrawn on cad but it's a classic duration oh that's interesting yeah i thought that's quite a small wing because i've got center section it's um actually what do you call that it's it's dihedral yeah, it's still only dihedral but set from the end of the center section so a very vintage design 1930s i think this design am i right in saying that something like that designed around the smae fuselage competition formula by, by lewis a heath in 39 uh, so there we are, and Keelcraft kitted it, um, added it to the range in 46. Um, the all up flying weight is 2.8 ounces. Um, that's going to be interesting. Mine won't be very much heavier because a rubber motor and propeller is actually quite heavy in the kit. So we've got these fantastic laser cut ribs. Look at the under camber on that. I'll need loads of down thrust great big rubber pad propeller quite light but look at that 10 inch yeah 10 inch propeller great big thick rubber band a couple of tires they're not very vintagey are they but that's what they look like these days fuse large stringers and yeah 332nd balsa, former, former, dihedral template, front former. It's, and that's it really. Not a lot there. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the, uh, with the wings, I think, you know. Oh, there's a bit of undercarriage wire. I'll probably get away with that, big wise. Little nose block, which I won't be probably using. Oh, quite a nice little kit. As I say, I've got Ian and Cheryl to thank for this. And um, he's probably wondering why I haven't built it by now. Well, no, you're not, Ian. You know why I haven't built it? It's because I've been Da Vinci in. <laughs> so let's put that up there. Like that. Things. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's start with the center section, shall we? You can't beat starting a new project, can you? Lovely. Put your sleeves up. Right, so what do we need here? W6s. They're all W6s apart from the centre ones, which are W5. And the M ones, which are W5. So we need a cutting board. We need a scalpel. And I need one, two, three W6s and two W5s. And now, I mean, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Just beautiful. Uh, W5. I want to try and get, let's find the word and time grade it a bit. The leading edge is 332nd. So there's the pieces I need. Uh, one more thing I need. <clears throat> um, each component is going to need to be sanded just to get that little nobule off of 
and also at the same time it just takes off some of that laser burn uh, dihedral brace come out come out there we are so the dihedral template will go there to set the angle of those ribs support wing spars off building board with small pieces of scrap balsa okay this is my main spar which I'm going to put um, I'm going to cut over length and then I can sand it once the ribs are on so I'm going to cut that to about there All right, now the main spar will sit about there and each rib will slot in over the top. And then these W5s have got the extra big cutout to allow for the thickness of the dihedral brace which will go in on top of there. And there like that, one there like that. Be great, you can just dry fit things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. This has to be um, one of the most relaxing things you can do, really. All right, it's coming on, isn't it? Um, leading edge is going to slot in there, a diamond shape, and the trailing edge. Well, that's a little bit more interesting. Also, got to pack up the edge of that just slightly not a lot got a file here which looks like it's about the same thickness of the ribs might be slightly smaller but it's um file a slot the slot has to be about a sixteenth deep surprised they didn't supply a piece of trailing edge section actually because it's going to take quite a bit of sanding right <clears throat> Now I can pin these down, but as I say, I do have to put a little spacer under there. Now to stop this sticking to that, I'm going to use the old trick, the old trick of sticking sellotape on it. That's not the old trick. The old trick is to put a piece of candle wax on it. Okay one piece of balsa with sellotape stuck on so I'm going to place that pretty much just halfway so I've got got the joint covered obviously it's quite important to get it flat but there's no rush to do this in the back there, drop it down there. Use the dry end to just clean it up. I'm going to put the end W5s in with the dihedral brace. Now the dihedral brace is going to be glued there. It's going to go in there, down there, and then we set that rib to quite a big angle. That one there, like that. So I'm going to do the other one just the same. Start with a dihedral brace up. Okay, so the leading edge goes in a diamond pattern. Now I shall cut it over length about there. So I just need to run in some glue to all those little notches. Isn't this great? I'm not sure I could have built a model of this um, delicateness. Is that a word? This when I was a lad, although. It would have been a much better fly than any of the other models I built. I didn't even know competition models existed. 
they probably were on the shelf in the model shop but I was never can't remember ever being shown them you always want to build the scale model don't you the Spitfire or something just making sure that there's no gaps that looks okay and those ribs are down onto the board so now let's just check That one wants to be a little bit steeper. That's better. Okay. Flat on that edge, but that edge needs to be tapered. So let's do that. That looks pretty good straight away. I've sanded the angle on this edge and I've also used the square file just to sand a diamond shape into the leading edge of those so this should fit beautifully. I usually start with the fuselage actually don't I but it's fancy starting with the wing on this one. Uh, right okay let's pop a little bit on there and a bit on there okay and we'll just slip that on there like that give the blade a little wobble and it comes I'll wipe the surplus off of there as well looks like the glue's just going to hold it in there this is just so relaxing. You don't get much done in the time, I guess. But I've got some editing I must get on with. That's the wing center section. We'll stop there. I think that's quite nice progress. We might do a little bit more later on. Cheers, guys.